Yo, what's going on out there in them digital streets? This your player partner Watt checking in, and this is the Dropbox, and let's get into it. Yeah, man, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and let's get into this clip. Last week, when the 4th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously upheld the 2017 death penalty decision for Dylan Roof, that's the white supremacist who murdered nine black congregants in cold blood at one of the most symbolic and historic black churches in the country, I shared with my viewers an unpopular opinion. Take a look. You take somebody who did one of the most awful things we've ever seen or heard, and then you give him the death penalty and everybody says, okay, fine. So there are cases where the death penalty works. And then guess what happens? The death penalty is then used, not just for the Dylan Roofs of the world, not just for the Boston Marathon bombers, it's far more often going to be used against black and brown people. As it generally goes with unpopular opinions, this one also got a bunch of boos and thumbs down on social media. People made their own pages just to tell me how dumb I was. So I wanted to invite someone who can intelligently verbalize the disagreement that many people feel uh, with my opinion. Joining me now is Riza Islam. He is a researcher, an international activist, and a member of the Nation of Islam. Brother Islam, welcome to the show. Uh, I say, even yep. for the Dylan Roofs of the world, we shouldn't practice the death penalty. That's my position. I just want to stipulate that. Just to be clear, I'm not saying we should have a death penalty, uh, but just exclude this one white killer. I'm saying it shouldn't be for anybody, and he shouldn't be an exception. What do you say? Interestingly enough, you know, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I have not seen yourself or others come out and say that when it comes to a black person per se, when it comes to one who was actually guilty with overwhelming evidence and who has admitted to committing the actual crime. That is the only reason why. I'm kind of confused here. He goes into a church uh, with malice aforethought. He planned to kill people. He did it. He admitted to it. And he even laughed and said, I want to make it crystal clear. I do not regret what I did. So at that point, there is no question. He deserves the death penalty, seeing how he removed nine lives. His life is not worth nine, not even worth one. I think that's a, I think that's a solid argument in terms of the heinousness of uh, Dylan Roof's crimes. I wouldn't dispute that. It was malice aforethought. Uh, he decided to go into a church and kill nine people. I can't imagine a more disgusting thing to do. Um, as far as your, your initial point, um, I always say no death penalty. For me, the death penalty isn't about innocence or guilt. I'm saying that for three pr primary reasons we shouldn't do it. One, uh, we get it wrong too often. Two, it doesn't stop crime from happening or murder from happening. And three, America doesn't have the moral authority to kill its citizens or to decide who gets to live or die. That, that's my premise. Um, but yeah, I absolutely have st stood out against black folk who have done g acts that they're guilty of. But my primary energy, you're right, is, is spent on black people who are innocent. You know, I'm, we got, you know, people uh, like like uh, Troy Davis, who we fought for, Tukey Williams, who we fought for. I've been I've spent the last few decades oh. fighting on behalf of Mumia Abu Jamal. And so I spent a lot of energy on those cases. And part of it, brother, is tactical. It's much easier to say, look, this brother's innocent. This sister's innocent. And so if y'all are about to kill an innocent person, then you may not know how many other people are also innocent. So let's stop the practice altogether. Well, interestingly enough, and to all the people that you just mentioned, they actually have solid justifiable reasons which determine and demonstrate why their innocence would be more than likely. They have not admitted to crimes. They did not commit crimes blatantly in a heinous malice of forethought setting. They did not write it in journals. They did not uh, promote it all over social media. Some of them, of course, when they committed certain crimes or whatever they were accused of doing, they did it before social media existed. But I'm saying in this circumstance, a white man does not have to be put to death in order to justify extending or expanding death to happen for black men. They do that, period. They kill us, period, because we are black men in America. That's why they do it. We are guilty until proven innocent rather than innocent until proven guilty in America by virtue of our skin color alone. They believe and they have put in books, they have put in laws, they have put in propaganda that the black man is inherently evil, inherently wicked, inherently insane, wants to kill, he wants to rape, he wants to murder. So that is how they have uh, foisted this type of characteristic and how they have mischaracterized us generally. But I don't believe that this individual serving for the actual crime that he committed and falling into the penalty, which he rightfully deserves, and that he admitted to, I don't think that's going to be used to then say, you know what, now let's put to death more innocent black people when we already do that. Long before Dylan Ruth was born in 1994, we've done that. After his death, we're gonna still do that. 
I don't see that correlating. I don't see that being a logical argument whatsoever. And I think that's why you received the pushback you did, because he is a blatant, admitted, open devil who did what he did. And because of that, there is no justifiable reason whatsoever, you know, to keep him alive. There, There is no reason. He deserves the death uh, that he has literally given to other people. The Bible says it. The Holy Quran says it. Logic says it. Science says it. You know, you reap what you sow, you got what you gave, and what goes around comes around, and he definitely deserves what he dished out to others. Yeah, man. So that was the clip of uh, Mark Lamont Hill and Brother Rizza Islam um, having a conversation about uh, unpopular opinion that Mark Lamont Hill had. Um, now, I'm not going to break down the entire video. I feel like Brother Rizza Islam gave... Um, some good talking points and that's how you deal with those particular situations so you can view the the clip in its entirety um at mark lamont hill's um youtube channel but let's get into um some of the points that i had in regards to this particular clip so now in his initial um unpopular opinion he makes the claim that because america got it right that this is somehow going to it affect um black people negatively and he says black and brown but i specifically focus on black uh the brown people they got their own issues um they dealing with so yeah until we all agree on the same issue then it's no us i'm not in <laughs> my issue is not your issue good sir um but yeah so he makes this point to where it's going to aff affect black people negatively and to that i say this when it comes to the american judicial system the idea of justice um it's a good idea in practice well in theory rather um however when it's put into practice because the people that carry out the justice they have biases you know they're discriminatory they're white supremacists oftentimes you end up with situations where um black people are treated unjust in this judicial system and it's been that way for a while and i will say that the pivot now is that black americans demand justice you know and we're expressing ourselves in a way that people understand and it forces the judicial system to be what it should have always been, which is fair. And so when situations like this occur, where someone walks in a church, you know, takes multiple lives, the penalty for that is for his life to be taken. And the spin job comes in when he says that there is something worse than what you've experienced prior to you demanding justice it isn't and nothing is as bad as someone being allowed to kill people with impunity and just walk freely that's not good for society in general never mind it being ha having a negative impact on black people you s at the end of the day you're allowing killers back into your community but he goes on to express his thought in a manner where he's saying that the thing that's worse than what you've experienced is the thing that you've experienced where okay if we allow the death penalty to take place now all of a sudden innocent black people will be incarcerated and killed unjustly shit's already happening shit's always been happening and it'll continue to happen as long as the people don't uphold the standard of justice now i want to touch on the actual interview itself and some things about the interview that may have went over a lot of people's head um the first thing is the optics of this interview what mark lamont hill said in that initial unpopular opinion was so off kilter and so off the rails is that he doesn't have any protection after that it's almost like even white people are looking at you like nigga is he crazy um and that's something that we always have to be mindful of because people will make these very wild statements and then they'll bring other people in from the communities especially intelligent and articulate brothers like brother rizza like brother rizza 
and try to intellectualize the madness um and props to to our brother once again man because he was able to um just skirt around all of that foolishness and that insanity and just show like okay this is not uh this is not a conversation this is just one person showing the world how asinine and insane this other person's ideas are but you have to be very mindful of these type of situations especially when these guys get these platforms and they say these crazy things and then they bring people on from the community that we hold up and they try to intellectualize the madness because people from the community we know who mark lamont hill is but it's the people outside of the community that if some random youtuber comes across this um this interview they see it as a cover they see it more as a conversation versus seeing it as a teaching moment and that's where these situations can become dangerous you know but yeah that's my thought on this um interview what say you you know what to do come and kick it with your tribe in the comment section below and let's have a conversation about it and on that note i'm out the box with it do you hear me